Well, the Goldman Environmental Prize honors grassroots leaders involved in local efforts where positive change is created through community or citizen participation and the issues that affect them. Now, the prize seeks to inspire ordinary people to take extraordinary actions to protect the natural world. Yesterday, we introduced you to Phyllis Omido, the Kenyan recipient of the 2015 Goldman Environmental Prize. And in part two of my conversation with her, Phyllis tells us her motivation and the challenges she faces in the effort to save her community. We always had uh, incidences that would be really extreme at some point. Um, when we started, it was the roofing sheets that would corrode because of the acid that landed on it. And after some time, the plants dried out, the fruit plants. And then we realized the children started coughing, okay? Um, when it went on, the mothers started having miscarriages. They could not, yeah, they could not carry their babies to town. And so it went on and on. The effluent that was being channeled into the community was so bad. There's a time the kids were playing football, their ball went there, and one boy went to retrieve it. And when he put his foot in the effluent, the foot came out totally burnt. So that's how bad the situation was. And yet this is a discharge that was being directed to the river that the community used. They would shut down the smelter for a week, then reopen it and say they complied. So we kept asking them, what did they comply with? Share that information with us. But uh, we never got the information. So in 2012, while we were planning a demonstration, I was arrested um, and I slept in the cells. And the next day I was arraigned in court on charges of inciting violence and illegal gathering alongside 16 members, some community members, some members of my organization. Um, and so for about eight months, we had to go to court um, mm -hmm. uh, weekly yeah. and listen to the state uh, witnesses give evidence against us. But finally, we were acquitted by the judge. He said that uh, we were within our rights to want to demonstrate. It was a leg legitimate uh, demonstration. And so after that, when we came back, we did our demo again, yeah. <laughs> where we had, Terrible. yeah, on 20, 2014, we did a mega demo. At the same time, we did a petition to the Senate. We wrote to the UN Special Reports on Toxic Waste and said this, that by that time we had compiled so many documents. We, there's a government body called the pu Public Complaints Committee had done a report uh, in 2009. Unfortunately, it was hidden from us until 2012 when we obtained it um, and decided to demo because the, the recommendations that were inside the report had not been complied with. But then the Senate committee came and said, this thing should never, ever, ever be allowed to reopen. And so that was victory for us. Right. And so that's why we're here. All right, so what is the status of things today as we speak? As of now, the government had asked the public, uh, public uh, health uh, department to carry out 50 random random tests September last year. Uh, the state is still withholding those results from us. They have not given us those results. So we are still pushing for the blood test to be released to the community. And uh, the CDC has also partnered with our Ministry of Health. They are doing uh, a study to quantify the contribution of the lead smelter to the blood lead levels in Owinohu. We are expecting that report out any time. After that, we want to push for cleanup. We want the community cleaned up. We want everyone who's, uh, who's tested and uh, comes out positive for lead poisoning to be treated. And we want the community compensated because their mothers there who lost their wounds because of that experience. Their mothers who lost their babies there are men who have erectile issues because of uh, both former workers and some of the community members. So we need someone to take responsibility for all that. Now, you go back home after this um, uh, event in Washington. What are you taking back and what are you going to do with it? I think I'm taking back hope for our communities. Um, we've been operating with nothing. <laughs> we've just been operating on passion and just sheer tenacity. Now we have finance. 
Well, Phyllis Omido there. We want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we covered during the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54. Check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com.